So who might be President Biden's opponent in the general election? A handful of Republicans have already announced they're running, and one of them is joining us now. 2024 Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. He's co-founder of the Strive Asset Management, and he joins us from his campaign headquarters in Ohio. Good to have you here on the show. Thanks so much. So I want to ask you about a new poll that came out yesterday showing that more than half of Americans now believe that former President Trump did something illegal. It's the biggest shift in independence, however. It's 11 percent point increase. 54 percent now say the charges against Trump are somewhat or very serious. Does this open a lane for you, do you think? Well, look, I have a view that the prosecution against Trump in New York is politicized, but I actually see an opportunity in this election to go further than Trump did in putting America first, but also most importantly, Elizabeth, to unify the country in the process. And I think that's something that Americans of every stripe are quietly hungry for, from people even in Trump's own base to independence in this country. I think we are hungry for national unity, for a revival of those shared ideals that set America into motion 250 years ago, and I'm running for president to revive those ideals, I think we can deliver it with the policy agenda that I'm advancing. And even to the people who voted for Trump, what I'm saying is I'm actually going to take that America first agenda further than Trump ever did, but to bring a broader swath of independence along with us. Well, that's the key right there. Um, Governor Hutchinson, one of your opponents, competitors, so to speak, for the nomination, came on our show last week and said former President Trump should drop out of the race because of the indictment. Do you agree with that assessment? I actually disagree with that. I believe in letting the voters of this country decide who gets to lead the country. That will result in greater trust in the system. And I say that as somebody who's running against Donald Trump. It would be a much more convenient for me if Donald Trump were not in this race. But I think we will build greater trust in this process and greater trust in our electoral system if every candidate is allowed to run who wishes to run, including Donald Trump, without elite interference, without prosecutorial interference. But I believe there's an opportunity to defeat the other candidates in this race through persuasion and through actually defining an affirmative agenda that all Americans can rally behind. That's what I'm on a mission to do. And I think that's the right way to do it, not the way that Asa Hutchinson or anybody else would prefer by eliminating competition. I don't see it that way. I think the voters get to decide. And one of your biggest competitors is Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who you have said is unsuited to be president. You have called him fundamentally uncourageous. Why would you do that? Well, look, I think that Ron DeSantis is fine as a governor. But right now in the White House, we don't need a follower. We need a leader. Ron DeSantis serves to do stunts. Political stunts are his specialty. He will do something so long as it trends on Twitter without actually solving the alleged problems he even set out to solve. Look, Disney now getting the better of him by actually duping that board into stripping of its power, doing a deal with BlackRock to actually keep $13 billion of the state's assets invested with BlackRock, even after he made a fuss out of pulling a paltry $700 million out. I also think that somebody who won't tell the people of this country whether he got the second COVID shot, whether or not he'll even talk to NBC News. My view is I talk to everybody, left, right or center. And if you want to actually sit across the table representing America, across the table from Xi Jinping, We can't afford to have a president who's afraid to talk to a news network because they're a little mean to him. I think there are moments in American history where it's okay to have a professional career politician in charge. This isn't one of them. We need somebody who's an outsider and a leader. That's what I'm I'm just curious to get your thoughts on the news today. Um, We have another mass shooting, uh, this time down in Louisville, Kentucky. What do you believe, if you were president, what would you do to curb the violence, the gun violence in this country right now? Look, first, my my heart goes out to those families and those who were affected. I know the news is still developing as we watch it. But one of the things that stood out to me, at least, was that in a sick way, this perpetrator live Instagram fed. It was on a live Instagram feed for the killing itself. And I think it was a moment that made me reflect on the role of social media in the mental health epidemic in our country. What do we see? We know it was a young perpetrator. We know young people have been affected and grown up in that environment with addictive social media that's contributing to a mental health epidemic in this country. Right, it but you're not blaming social media. A health you, you're, you're not, I just want to be clear. You're no, not, not blaming social media for the, the violence today. Not for today's incident, of course not. But okay. I'm saying that it is a reminder of the fact that there's a mental health epidemic in our country there is. that we do need to address. 
And Paris. I do think that social media plays a role in making that mental health epidemic even worse, especially amongst young people. And note that that was a young person, I believe the news reports are to be believed, might have been as young as 21 years old. I think we need to take a long, hard look. And, and I'm biased because one of my policies here as U.S. president is to say that if you're not old enough to smoke an addictive cigarette by the age of 18, then I don't think you should be allowed to use an addictive, toxic social media product before the age of 16 or 15 either. But I do think we need to take a long, hard look at what has changed in the last 50 years in this country. Right. Young people are suffering from a serious mental health epidemic. And I do think that's responsible for a lot of the uptick in violence we've seen in recent decades. Well, Vivek Ramaswamy, I hope to have you back on the show to talk about just that issue. It's an important one. It needs to be covered more. And we on this report on this show plan to do that. So we'll have you back for sure to talk about that. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. All right. Switching out as just hours ago, just the Justice Department formally 